In this video, I'm going to go over how you can get started with using Charles for testing. We'll go over what is Charles and some of the features that would be of particular interest if you are going to be testing the application. Let's get into it. Charles is a web proxy that runs on your own computer. Your web browser or any other internet application is then configured to access the internet through Charles. And Charles is then able to record and display for you all of the data that is sent and received. Now, Ch since Charles is a proxy tool, it goes between your web browser or what you see on your device or computer and the internet and makes calls on your behalf. Now I'm going to walk us through some features of Charles that I think would be of particular interest to testers. Starting off with SSL proxying. SSL stands for Secure Sockets Layer. Here we would be able to view SSL requests and responses in plain text. Next, we have bandwidth throttling to simulate slower internet connections, including latency. We would also then be able to edit requests to edit to test different inputs and lastly breakpoints to intercept and edit requests or responses. Things off by downloading Charles Proxy. Charles Proxy. We'll go to download. Here you will see there are three options. We have Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. In this case, I have a Mac, so we're going to go for this option. We'll now wait for it to download. Awesome stuff. Let's quickly read the user license agreement and agree. Now let's drag Charles into the application folder. Cool, it copied into the applications folder. Let's open up Charles and have a wee nosy. Ooh, here it says Charles is an app downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? Yes, of course, open. Now we need to give it some time for it to load. A key thing to note here is this is a 30 day trial version. Uh, so for this demonstration, I'm just using a, a free version and you might see this pop up uh, every now and then. But if you have the paid version, you won't have to deal with the little pesky pop ups. Let's do a quick walkthrough on some of the areas of Charles I'd like to highlight. The ch there are two ways you can view the traffic that's going to your device. You can either do it through structure or sequence. So I'm going to do some calls and you can see how things look when you have structure, um, when you're on structure versus when you're on sequence. Uh, so let's go to a popular New Zealand news website. Let's make this half screen so it's easy for us to see side by side. Oh, look at all those calls. Things are busy. Uh, versus sequence. Now, what you may find is there's too much happening and you could choose to filter um, by going to this field. Now, for testing purposes, we are going to be using the Parabang website, but first, we need to install the Charles root certificate. So let's go ahead and do that. Charles root certificate. We need to go to the Charles menu. Go to help. SSL proxying and install Charles root certificate. Now, 
Wait, it ended up in my system keychain. Uh, so it's valid for all users. I'm the only person on this laptop. But make sure you go ahead. Uh, you might have a red cross um, there. Get info and go to trust. You'll if you see a red cross there, you would see that the system that the system defaults are enabled. Uh, but to be able to see all the HTTPS traffic, also including for mo mobile device testing, you'll want to be trusting Charles. Now that's sorted. Let's go ahead and have a look at our test website. Our test website is not actually this news website, but good old Parabank. I quickly search for that. Wait. Confirm everything and have a look at this beautiful application. Now, since there's a lot of traffic happening on the right hand side, I am going to go to sequence, clear things up, and filter by paragraphic. So this means that uh, if there's any other calls happening on my laptop, I won't be seeing it and I'll only be seeing traffic going here to this host. Now to be able to see in plain text um, the requests and responses being sent, uh, you need to have SSL proxying enabled. Uh, so this is set up in this screen. Wait. You need to have SSL proxying enabled. To do that, you can go to the Charles menu. So first you would go to proxy and then SSL proxy settings. Now note here, I have already enabled SSL proxying for this host. So what you would do is you would um, add a location and add the host here. Now I wanna remove this and show you how it is originally done. So, wait, we are going to register a profile, first name, last name, address, city, state, wait, state, zip code, phone number, I don't think there's any validation being done here. And let's create a new tip. Let's go for Venus, like Venus Williams. And it's not safe. Now here you'll see that SSL proxy is not enabled for this host. Enable in proxy settings. Now to get the host name, you can, what I tend to do, is copy the URL and now enable SSL proxying and I also double check on the proxy SSL settings to see how things look. So on that port we are able to see the traffic in plain text which means for any future requests we should be able to see uh, what's happening. So for example, um, update contact info. If we had a look at this contents, uh, here we go, in plain text. Now we can make things a bit more fun by editing requests and responses uh, by using breakpoints. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. The breakpoints tool lets you intercept requests and responses before they are passed through Charles. You can examine and edit the request or response and then decide whether to allow it to proceed or to block it. Go to the update contact info screen. Now 
With breakpoints not enabled, you're going to see that there were two calls made. There was actually a slight delay from when the field names were loaded and then the contents was loaded. So here, I'm going to add a breakpoint. Now let's go back to accounts overview. And then by going to update contact info, I should get an opportunity to edit the response as it comes back. Edit the request, execute, edit the response, that's what I'm talking about. So JSON text, let's change the first name to oh, 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 oh. execute. Oh, got a new name, fantastic. So that's an example. Now, what you can do is, aside from editing the contents of a request or um, or the keys, so for example, first name and last name in this case, you could even uh, edit the error code or the response code. Uh, so you might have noticed that here I'm getting a bunch of 200s, but you know what? Sometimes life isn't fantastic and you get a 500. So let's see how things look when we get to one of those. So again, I'm going to, I'm going to go to accounts overview, back to update info. Now, I'll leave the request as is, but the response, oh, let's go status of 500. Execute. Oi, an internal error has occurred. Charles can be used to adjust the bandwidth and latency of your internet connection. This enables you to simulate modem conditions using your high-speed connection. The bandwidth may be throttled to any arbitrary bytes per second. This enables any connection speed to be simulated. The latency may also be set to any arbitrary number of milliseconds. The latency delay simulates the latency experienced on slower connections, that is the delay between making a request and the request being received at the other end. Is check out the throttling feature in Charles. First, I'd like to have a look at internet speed in Philippines and um, notice here it's a 25 uh, download and a 6 upload. Now I'm going to access a website in Philippines and we are going to see how the experience is if we throttle the internet speed. To do this, I'm going to go to proxy, throttle settings, and now we are side by side. Uh, let's aim for a download and upload speed that is uh, slightly slower than the median in the country as of December 2022. So we'll add the host news.abs dash cbn.com and now we will stop throttling or stop throttling so now enter this here and let's see how things look there we go and then if you want to stop throttling, you can do that. There are some other settings you can explore. And instead of using a throttle preset, which is what I did here, uh, you could choose to uh, manually update the spe additional specific fields. You can also choose to throttle everything that's going through Charles and then um, specifically remove certain uh, URLs and make them exempt.